Hi everyone and uh, welcome to First World Adventure. Here we are, it's um, two weeks in and we've crossed through the centre of Australia, been through the desert, places like uh, Docker River, which will be a memory that we won't forget in a hurry, uh, into Uwaru and down through the Udnadatta track. We've gone through the Flinders and so today's a rest day in Peterborough. And um, on the blog I introduced you to Murray a few days ago. If you haven't seen that, take a chance and have a look at it. What we're going to do today is actually get Murray to walk through his bike setup and that might give you some ideas if you're thinking about doing some adventure travel on bikes then he's got some really cool ideas for his DR Suzuki so um, I'm gonna jump out of screen and let Murray jump right in so hey thanks for watching keep following the blog and appreciate all the support DRZ 400 great adventure bike but like everything it's a compromise on what you want to do with it so I've been using Michelin tires front and rear MT 21s in Western Australia great for the gravel However, over in the western and central desert, I've had to change to a Michelin Desert Race. Great tyre, works awesome in the sand. Also, make sure you use ultra heavy duty tubes. They're four millimetres thick, keep your tyre pressures up, works really good. Now, in terms of gearing, um, I'm running a 15 on the front and a 44 on the rear. They come standard with a 14, 47, but the 15 to 44 gears it up, so you drop your engine revs down, at doing the speed limit, you know, you're 110, 100 kilometers an hour, it'll cruise on that all day, and the torque of the DRZ still drives nice. Um, you can then get up to around about 400 or more kilometers range, works really good. Okay, and uh, no need to use a rear chain guard, I've taken it off, most of the motocross bikes you see never use them, and you're never going to put your foot there, especially if you've got your motocross boots, not a problem. Um, in terms of gearing, that's a 44 tooth sprocket, but I also tucked up in here in between the two BMB rear guards is a 47. So I've modified this rear plate, moved it back slightly, and the 47 is bolted in between there. Great setup. Also under here, this is where I carry my tire levers, and they also double as axle nuts um, spanners for the front and rear wheels. Great setup. While we're around the rear of the bike, we've got to take our tent with us, obviously, and I'll put this tube in here. And in this little bit here, if I can get it off, here is the tent poles. Voila! So there's all the tent poles for my tent. Gets them out of the way because with your B&B rear soft bags, it's hard to store something long and straight like this. So look at that. All in there. Plus tucked in the bottom of here, got some of those neoprene gloves. Because when you go to change your air filters and stuff or anything else on the bike, you're going to get covered in dirt. When you're out in the middle of nowhere there's and water is as tight as it is, very, very hard to find somewhere to wash your hands. Right. You're obviously going to need more fuel. So the standard tank's pretty small. There's a couple of options out there. A service makes some, Safari makes some in various sizes as well. This is a 17 litre. It actually holds about 20, would you believe it or not? Now, a couple of little tricks that I like um, is I've put an extra filler um, filter in here. Now this is an Acerbis locking fuel cap, and the only reason I do that is because some place when you're leaving your bike at night, well, you know, you want to make sure your fuel's secure. Now the caps don't always fit perfectly, but they but they do do the job, and inside here is this filter sock. Um, I like to make sure my fuel is always clean, nothing worse than having to strip down a carby out in the middle of the desert. Also, put another little inline filter down here as well. You can never be too safe you know, uh, with your fuel. So make sure that's that's a little extra. Um, on top of that, I've also, I'll pop over this other side, very hard to see it uh, in this light, but I've actually engraved up the side of the tank all the way down, so it shows me how many litres I've got in it. And obviously there's no fuel gauge on these. Now, um, in the front, um, you've got your twin radiators, and we've put the B&B, again, B&B, it's a great product, engineering, beautiful. Um, I'm not a salesman for them, but I really like their gear. So I've got the radiator guards in there. Now, in behind these radiator guards that you buy specifically to go with a 17-litre tank, there is a rear support bracket. It's a really difficult thing to get in there, but please make sure you use it, because if you don't use it and you have any little bit of impact, potentially you could push these guards and radiators back, and you're going to do more damage. Um, I know some guys don't put it in there. Um, persevere and put it in, please. Now, um, another little thing that I really like because on the DRZs they don't really have much of a fairing so this is a Lynx fairing it's made by Britannia Composites 
in Canada and they do a great job. It's got some good lighting. You can option different types of lighting. And the other nice thing with it too is you can put the fairing up and down in different positions. So if, you, if you're heading off-road doing some dirty scrub work, you know, you're going to bang around a few trees, blow bushes, put it down, turn down the highway, slide it up, gets rid of that buffet because that's, that's really draining on a long run. Okay, and on the Lynx fairing, you've obviously now finally got a dashboard. So you can utilize the standard instruments with the you know, your indicators and so forth. Um, you can option them with um, a USB plugs, power points, but it comes blank. You can put whatever you want on there. So I've added a engine temperature gauge, I've added a voltmeter, and I've added a double USB plug, which is waterproof. I've added my heated grips for my, um, the controller for my Oxford heated grips. They all work really well, plus a Garmin. Now it's just a run-of-the-mill Garmin, but it works great around and While we're on Garmin's, make sure that the Garmin setup matches the map you're using. Because there are a couple of different types of systems out there. Now I'm using the HEMA map, and the HEMA map here will show you that it is based on WGS84 datum. That's World Geodetic System 84. So if you're plotting a grid reference in there, such as, oh, there'll be one on here somewhere, um, any of these grid references. If you don't match the map to your Garmin, you could end up 20 kilometers away from where you need to be. A couple of other little tricks too. Again, when you're riding off-road, keep that down and you can get these great mirrors. There's a few brands out there. Fold them down out of the way so you don't get all the bark and trees and scrub and that. Um, I love my heated grips, but what I probably love more so all the time is my Keiko Cruise Control. This is great. So you just wind the throttle onto where you want it, wind the grip up, and there she sits. You can still overcome easy enough to roll it, but it tightens up, and you know you get that horrible tingling, tingling on the long runs, gets rid of that. While we're down in this area, also got, a bit hard to see in here, but the steering damper. This is a Rally Moto steering damper, and again, when you're coming through that sand at Docker River, Man, was I glad I had this on there. I just cranked it up and it worked, <laughs> worked a treat. So, right guys, one of the most important things, clean fuel is number one, clean air is number two. So I always run good filters. K&N make great ones, but on top of the K&N filter, I also run a filter sock. But I carry a number of these filter socks in little Ziploc bags, because you know how horrible they are. That K&N oil works, works a treat, but it's gets all over your hands and it's a shocker to get off so in the little ziplock bag I have my spare filter sock and I also have a couple of little neoprene gloves which I can just toss out when they're done another thing that I use my airbox for not conventional but this is where I store my cable ties <laughs> great spot for them doesn't get in the way and they're easily accessible because when you do want them you do want to use them grab them quick Right, I think that's about it. I've covered most of the basics on my DRZ. She's a great girl. Um, she's like my favourite old boot. She just keeps on going and going, but you've got to look after her. Thanks for watching.